Hi everyone, uh, my name is Tetsu Iwata and I will present our work on ZOCB and ZOTR. Uh, this is a joint work with Chen Chen Mao, Jiang Go, and Kazuhiko Minematsu. Uh, this is an overview and we will present ZOCB and ZOTR. Uh, these are non-spaced authenticated encryption with associated data and they use a clickable block cipher as the underlying frame tape. Uh, they fully utilize the input of the TBC to process a plain text and associated data. Uh, this property is often called full absorption and uh, they reduce the number of primitive calls of theta CB3 and OTR. Uh, we will see that they have a unique design feature uh, that an authentication tag is independent of a part of AD. Uh, this is the outline of this presentation. We start with the background and we will present our schemes ZOCB and ZOTR. Uh, then we will discuss instantiation and implementation. In the instantiation, uh, we will propose a tweakable block cipher called TAS. And then we will conclude. So uh, let's start with the background. This talk is about non-spaced authenticated encryption with associated data, or AEAD. And this is used for privacy and authenticity of plain texts and for authenticity of associated data, or AD. So uh, the encryption uh, takes a nonce N, A, D, A, and the plain text M as input, and returns a ciphertext C and the tag T. The decryption takes N, A, C, and T as input, and returns the plain text M or the reject symbol. There are various design approaches. Uh, there are dedicated designs, or one can design based on a block cipher or a trickable block cipher or a cryptographic permutation or a pseudorandom function. And uh, we are interested in the design based on a trickable block cipher. Now, Theta CB3 is uh, probably the most well known AAD scheme based on a trickable block cipher. Uh, this was not proposed as a standalone AEAD mode of trickable block ciphers, uh, but it was introduced as an abstraction of OCB3 for a security proof. Uh, but it is employed in many proposals for its strong features. Uh, for instance, it has a strong provable security result, and it is fully parallelizable, meaning that uh, all the trickable block ciphers can be called in parallel. So let's see how it works. Um, EK is a trickable block cipher and it takes a counter and the nonce as the trick input. S is the checksum of the plain text and uh, there is a separate process for AD. This authentication data is extruded into here to produce the final tag. So we see that the process for a plain text and that for AD are separated. And the question we ask is whether we can efficiently integrate these processes. Uh, this is a natural question uh, because it was explored for a sponge based and pseudo random function based schemes. Uh, the ice plain text block in theta CB3 is processed in this way. And the natural idea is to use the tweak input uh, to process the ice AD block in this way to uh, fully utilize the input of the tweakable block cipher and to achieve uh, full absorption. However, uh, if we do this, um, there is no place to maintain a counter and we lose the dependency of the NOS. Uh, to overcome these issues, uh, we rely on masks for the counter and NOS, as uh, in this figure. 
uh, alpha and beta are obtained by encrypting the nuns, and the counter is re realized with the doubling operation. Now, this can be abstracted uh, like this figure, where this uh, big trickable block cipher tube E takes a nonce counter and the IFAD block as the trick input. Uh, with this big trickable block cipher tube E, uh, we can design an AEAD scheme that we call IZOCB. Uh, tilde E uh, takes a nonce counter uh, and the AD block as the trick input. And we also have uh, domain separation. This illustrates the case for a plain text of three blocks and AD of less than three blocks. Um, S uh, is the checksum, uh, which is the XOR of all the plain text blocks we see that uh, there is no separate process for AD. Uh, we hope that IZOCB is secure. And uh, in fact, the privacy is fine from the uniqueness of the nonce and counter. Uh, however, uh, for authenticity, uh, we see that uh, this S only depends on the plaintext and the tag is independent of A1 and A2. So uh, changing A1 and A2 doesn't contribute to the tag. So at first glance, uh, it doesn't seem to provide authenticity. However, uh, when we decrypt uh, N, A, C, and T, the computed tag that is compared with the received tag depends on the entire AD. Uh, for instance, when we decrypt C1 uh, by using A1, this M1 depends on A1, and we see that the checksum also depends on A1. We can make a similar observation for other blocks, and we can in fact show that uh, IZOCB works and it provides authenticity. ZOCB is obtained from IZOCB by instantiating uh, the big trickable block cipher tube E with the uh, trickable block cipher E. Then we obtain ZOCB. Alpha is used as input and output masks, and beta is used as the input mask for the trick. Uh, they are obtained by encrypting the nonce, and we keep doubling the masks in order to realize a counter. Um, this illustrates the case for a plain text of three blocks and AD of less than three blocks. And uh, we see that there is no separate process for AD and the process of AD is fully integrated into the process of a print text. Uh, but if AD is long and cannot be absorbed into the process of a print text, then uh, we will need a separate process for it. Uh, about the provable security results, uh, we follow the standard security notions of uh, non-spaced AAD schemes. For privacy, we consider indistinguishability from random bits and the chosen plain text attacks. And for authenticity, uh, we consider unfrugibility and the chosen cipher text attacks. Uh, in both cases, we consider non-respecting adversaries only. So let's assume that we use a trickable block cipher uh, with dbit tricks and nbit blocks. Uh, then we can prove these theorems on privacy and authenticity. Uh, we will not explain the details of the parameters here, but uh, these results show that uh, ZOCB has the full nbit security when the trick length is at least the block length.
Uh, let's move on to the OTR. Uh, OTR is an AAD scheme based on the block cipher with all the features of OCB3 and uh, it does not use decryption of the block cipher uh, by making use of two round Python network. Uh, this uh, OTR with a nice font is the PBC based counterpart of OTR. Uh, it has a separate process of AD and it makes the same number of primitive calls as data CB3. And uh, we can integrate the process of AD into the process of a plain text. This figure describes uh, IZOTR. I will uh, not explain the details, but it uses a two-round Python network with a large tweakable block cipher tube E. And A1 is here, A2 is here, A3 is here, and so on. And we see that uh, the process of AD is integrated into the process of a plain text. Uh, this figure shows ZOTL, uh, which is obtained from IZOTL by instantiating the big tweakable block cipher tilde E with a tweakable block cipher E. The instantiation is slightly simpler than the case of uh, ZOTOCB uh, because the decryption of the tweakable block cipher is not involved. The provable security result is similar to the result of ZOCB and we can prove these theorems uh, which say that uh, ZOTR also has the full end bit security when the tweak length is at least the block length. Uh, now let me compare ZOCB and ZOTR to most relevant schemes. Uh, this shows uh, the primitive and uh, this column shows the number of primitive calls. Uh, this shows if the inverse of the primitive is needed and this shows the parallelizability. The number of primitive calls is for 80-bit AD and MN-bit plaintexts, where we assume that the block length is the same as the tweak length, and we ignore the constant number of primitive calls. We see that in ZOCB and ZOTR, uh, we can entirely remove the primitive calls needed to process AD if A is less than M. And even if uh, A is greater than M, uh, we can reduce the number of primitive calls. The number of primitive calls was not reduced without cost. Um, the use of a mask requires a doubling operation and the trick doesn't behave like a counter and uh, updating the trick can add the computational cost. So if AD is short, then uh, ZOCB and ZOTR can be slower if the cost for doubling is larger than the efficiency. In order to see the practical efficiency gain, uh, we instantiate it and implement it uh, ZOCB and ZOTL. So we will present our instantiation and implementation results. For instantiation, uh, we propose tweakable alias or T alias, which is a tweakable block cipher with a 128-bit block, 128-bit keys, and 128-bit tricks. Uh, this is obtained from AES256, where the concatenation of the key and trick is used as the AES256 key. Uh, we have AES256 here, where it takes a 256-bit key as the input, and we place the TAS key in the first part of the AS256 key. 
and the remaining part is used as the trick so that uh, the key is used as the whitening key. Uh, this is a simple trick of a block cipher and we claim 128-bit security of TAS in the single key setting. Uh, we remark that uh, the previous related key attacks against AS256 cannot be directly applied and we use TAS as the underlying plaintiff. So this is one of our implementation results showing the result of Theta CB3 and uh, ZOCB, where TAS is used as the underlying TBC and we used uh, this uh, Skylake family of CPU in our implementation. Uh, this graph shows the absolute speed of uh, ZOCB in cycles per byte. And uh, this axis shows the length of AD and uh, this axis shows the length of pentexts. Uh, from the graph, uh, we can see that in the fastest case, uh, ZOCB reaches the speed of about 1.46 cycles per byte. Uh, this graph uh, shows the ratio of the speed between ZOCB and theta CB3. The blue area uh, here uh, shows the area where ZOCB is faster than theta CB3. And we see that uh, if the input length is long and the plain text length is longer than the AD length, then uh, ZOCB performs better than theta CB3. Uh, these graphs show the result of theta CB3 and ZOTR, where we again use TAS as the underlying TBC. And this time uh, we use this uh, Haswell family of CPU in our implementation. Um, this graph shows the absolute speed of ZOTR and in the fastest case, uh, ZOTR reaches the speed of about uh, 2.33 cycles per byte. And uh, from this graph, we have a similar observation to before, uh, meaning that uh, if the input length is long and the plain text length is longer than the AD length, then uh, the uh, ZOTR performs better than theta CB3. We also used Skinny as the underlying TBC and implemented Skinny ZOCB, Skinny ZOTR, and Skinny Theta CB3. Uh, the source code, raw data, and the graphs are all available from this URL. The observation we make here uh, is that for short input data, uh, where the AD length is at most about 500 bytes, or the AD length is less than 12% of the plain text length, then uh, ZOCB and ZOTR do not perform better than theta CB3. On the other hand, if the AD length is long enough and the AD length is longer than 12% of the plain text length, then uh, ZOCB and ZOTR are faster than theta CB3. Uh, with sufficiently long input, uh, with the AD length longer than 12% of the plain text length, uh, the performance gain is about 40%, uh, meaning that uh, they are about 1.7 times faster than theta CB3. And similar observations hold if we use skinny as the underlying TBC. Now let me conclude. Uh, in this work, uh, we designed ZOCB and ZOTL, and they reduced the number of primitive cores of theta CB3 and OTL. We presented provable security results and software implementation results. As future directions and open questions, uh, designing a dedicated uh, trickable block cipher uh, with uh, large trick space and with uh, efficient trick update is useful in many applications, including ZOCB and ZOTL. 
uh, detailed security analysis of TAES remains open. And we think applying the design approach here to other TBC-based constructions would be interesting, uh, including uh, typical enciphering schemes or robust AE schemes or online AE schemes. Uh, this is the end of this presentation and thank you for watching. <laughs>